afternoon and good day to you all out there in, in wherever you are land. Um, and my guest today, uh, I'm talking about Jesus. My guests are Paul Jones and Fiona Endley. Is, is, have I got your names right there? Is it Fiona? Yes, Hendley? well, <laughs> those, are, those are our professional names, yes. Well, I thought I'd stick with that, but you, I know you're also Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Jones, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's lovely having you. Thank you so much for taking time out to, uh, to come and, and speak with me today. And we just hope that our time together will bless so many people as we talk about Jesus. So what could you say to me, Paul, Fiona? What, could, what would you say if somebody said to you, talk to me about Jesus? Um, you've just immediately brought up in my mind the late Bobby Ball, who was trying to talk about Jesus, and he couldn't. He burst into tears and said, I just love him. <laughs> and we just love him, don't we? <laughs> and he loves us. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's it, it, you know, what else can we say about it? We can say lots about Jesus, actually, but um, that, that's that's where it all starts love Absolutely. yeah that he loved us first and and i mean he just thinking about him jesus he's our life treflin he's our breath he's our you know um just that one-to-one -one every moment of every day that wonderful unconditional love that makes you feel so secure you know i suppose if you thought about a little child being born to loving parents, you know, when a child is like four or five years of age and they're saying, mommy, watch me do this, or dad, watch me do this. And they've got so much confidence. They feel so assured, so secure, and they know that their mother and father is going to go, oh, you're amazing. Wow, look at you. And... And that's how he makes you feel all the time, no matter what people say about you or do toward you or don't, you know, love or not. You've got that constant love, that constant assurance that you can be exactly who he made you to be. And he's pleased with that. And it's uh, it's very moving. It's very moving to have somebody who loves you unconditionally with you all the time. And, and he wants to be with everyone that way. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, a, a word there, Fiona, that reminded me of a song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think when, when we get to know Jesus, um, that's when our life really, really changes because we, we allow him, really, to participate in our lives. He's always there wanting us to let him come in, if you like. You know, mm -hmm. I, I imagine it's, it's like three children... The two of them are playing together, and the third child says, "Can I play? Can I play, please?" And Jesus never forces himself, but when 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 we allow him into our lives, then it changes everything. I think, anyway. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's good. And and throughout our lives, uh, our marriage, everything that we do, I mean, he, he's just the absolute center of everything. Mm -hmm. He's the one we go to for everything. Yes, because he is all wisdom. Yeah, but he's gentle. He's understanding, you know, when you blow it and you feel so like, oh, no, I just blown it. I'm so sorry. Instantly, there's that assurance again. I forgive you. It's OK. Mm. I'm with you. Isn't that and there's so many times in the day, yeah. never mind in the week, when you you just uh, need to check. And how can you check? You check by going to Jesus mm. and saying, is this right mm. or would that be better? And uh, you get it. Yeah. it, it it's the, that that information is always there because you know we have the mind of Christ, and so if we ask Him something, wham! It's yeah. uh, the answer is right there. That's right. You know, because we've we've made a, a commitment to Him that He be Lord of our lives. So now He lives in us. So He's right here. You know, I mean, just wherever you go. And mm -hmm. there's, I saw um, a, a girl, a young girl, a young, young girl being baptized recently. And um, she just, you know, the minister said, why do you want to be baptized? 
And she said, oh, because I just want to be as close to Jesus as I can be. And he said, oh, that's wonderful. And she said, well, I, I did go away from the Lord. And the minister said, what did that feel like when you went away from the Lord? And she said, it felt very lonely. I felt very isolated and alone, no matter how many people I was with. And, um, and he baptized her and she came up out of the water. And she said, I just love being close to Jesus. I am never alone. I'm never alone. And that's the thing, that intimacy with him, when he lives in you, you just, you just never alone, no matter where you are, what you're doing, what you're facing. And he, and you know, do you know what? In the night, I was thinking this, the word of God, we love the word of God because that's his words. That's the words of the very spirit of God. The very spirit of Jesus is the Bible, all yeah. those words. Sure. And he can't, he can't lie. Amen. He can't lie. And I was just enjoying that in the middle of the night. I was thinking about the Lord and I was talking to him and I was saying, it's so wonderful that all your promises are true and you can't lie mm -hmm. ever. You know, imagine that. That's so wonderful to know that you can go to his word. Maybe it's healing that someone is needing. And he says, oh, yes, on the cross, I, I, I died for your sin, but I, I died for you to be whole as well. Yes. And we can know that that's the truth, the whole truth. And we can receive the goodness of that word because it, we can't lie. Yeah. And I think one thing that people don't realize is that Jesus makes you change your mind. He changes your mind for you. Um, you think, well, that's what I might have done in the past. That's what I would normally do. Or that's weird. I would normally have done this, but in, I, I just didn't take any notice of what you said. And I just smiled and walked away. Whereas you might have reacted in a totally, totally different way. At one time, if somebody said this to you or somebody said that to you, and you surprise yourself, I do. It happens to me. I'm thinking, why didn't I react? Why did I react that way? Why didn't I react this way? And it's, again, it's a, a case of saying, well, what would Jesus do? You know, and I th I just think it's it's absolutely because he's, he's your best friend, really, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We always say to each other, you're my best friend apart from Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And, and you know, you, you, you go to your best friend and, and ask for advice. Yeah. And sometimes I go to my best friend after, after Jesus and ask for advice as well. But, yeah. but, but you know, you, you can ask anything. Yeah. That, what, that's what's so wonderful. Yeah. And um, it, it might be it, it's something that's nothing to do with uh faith or ministry or, or anything like that just a, a straightforward um let's say it uh a, a, a crossroads or a fork in the road and you just really don't know which is which is right and you just all you need to do is speak in tongues pray in tongues mm -hmm. and then you get it and you just say, that's it. No, I will never go over there. You know that's, that story when it, it, somebody was at a, a fork in the road and they'd been told that uh, in that little village there were people who only ever told the truth and people who only ever lied. Well, who were they serving? But you have to go up to this one person. You only have one question. There's this one person. And you and you have to ask them a question and know which way to go. And the, the question is, in case anybody wants to know, <laughs> if I ask that person over there, which way, which is the way to where I'm going? Uh, what would they they tell me? And and the guy would say they would tell you that way. And if that's true, well, of course it's true. Um, it doesn't really matter whether it's true or false. You would go the other way because that person over there either tells the truth or they lie. So if they told you a lie. 
it would be that way. If they told you the truth, it would be that way. So, um, no. If, if, if sorry, if they were a liar, they would tell you the wrong way. Yeah. If they were telling the truth, they would tell you the right way. So, in either case, that's the way it would go. Yeah, you go the opposite way to the answer. Yeah. Well. Yes, you, you go the opposite way to the answer because the question you've asked is what would that person say? That's right, yeah. yeah. So the liar would tell a lie, which would mean that the answer over there would be turn left, which really would say turn right. And if a guy is telling the truth, were to say he'd tell you he would turn left because he's a liar, so he would turn right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing is the thing is in this world there are so many voices, aren't there? There there are just voices, yes. so many voices. And people are looking things up, you know, Google asking Google this and asking this and asking their best friends and asking and you know, there are some good things and there are some good people and there are some earnest people and people that might, you know, say, Well, you could try, you could do, but when you get hold of this. This is full of absolutely the truth. This yeah. word will guide you. You know, the Bible says itself that it is a lamp unto our feet. The mm. word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And, you know, if you're in a, a really dark jungle and you haven't got a lamp, how do you get out? You don't know what your next step is going to be if there's thick darkness. Mm. And sometimes in life, we don't know what to do. We don't know which way to go. Mm. But if someone suddenly gives you a lamp, suddenly you can see a, a way to get out of there. And, <laughs> and, 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 and this Bible is a lamp unto our feet. It's amazing. We love it. We just, every day, yes. every day we read the word. Every day we get up and Amen. it's a, been such a blessing to us when we first made that commitment Treflin, to the Lord that we were taught so well that you spend time every day in this precious word because that is going to be feeding your spirit if, if you know we are spirit soul and body and we physically need food for our bodies and and for our souls obviously you know we can read and and whatever but but our spirits need food and yeah. spirit food is the word of God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that keeps us strong and it keeps us close to him. And the more you read the word, the more when he speaks to you, you'll know it's him because you recognize his voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So precious. Correct. So precious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, many years ago, well, 10 years ago, actually, um, I, had a, I had a TIA and then I had a stroke in, in 2013, 10 years ago, in November it was. And um, as a result of that, um, I had, um, it's affected my eyesight and the top left-hand quadrant of vision sort of went, so I lost my license. And the Lord would wake me up at daft o'clock in the morning and the dad would give me a worship song, which I would write down and sing into my phone and do something with mm -hmm. But this particular morning I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, your camera is on its way. Now, I've been looking to, to get a camera to do more green screen work that I, that I was doing at the time because we, we were filming theatre shows and we had to stop doing that because mm -hmm. I wasn't able to drive because we were all over the country doing that. Anyway, so the Lord said, the camera's on its way. And, and he said, you will drive again, but not yet. And I took my mobile phone out and, and after the Lord had spoken to me, he said lots of things. And I recorded, God just spoke to me. This is what he said, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote it down. And so I'm not wrote it down. I recorded it in my phone and I shared that recording with people. I said, I had a time of prayer with the Lord last night. And this is what the Lord told me. Um, and, you know, to have that kind of communication where God takes time out, to speak to me, to you know, to say something to me in the size of the universe is just unbelievable. Um, and I didn't know what it meant was the camera, your camera's on its way. But by Saturday, I'd actually got the camera, but I didn't know which one I was going to buy or if I was going to buy that particular one until Friday. And this took place on, I think, a Wednesday. And it was two years later that I actually got, got my driving license back. So everything that the Lord told me was right, but I had to wait. 
And, you know, we can put our trust in what God says. You know, God says in, in Matthew 7 that everyone who asks receives. But it doesn't mean to say you'll get it straight away. It's like it's it's like you're playing a musical instrument, you know, you can pick it up and you can teach somebody what to do. And um it's not going to happen straight away. You're not going to become proficient. That takes time. And sometimes God says, you're not ready yet for this. And he mm. makes us fit for purpose. And that's the amazing part about having that relationship with Jesus. He knows what he wants for you. And it says in Ephesians 2.10, um, things. it's Ephesians 2.10, it might be 11 or 12, but it's there, thereabouts. For good works that Christ has prepared in advance for us to do. Prepared in advance for us to do. Mm. Mm. Yes. You know, yes, yes. we're on his to-do list. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm on the to-do and, list. <laughs> and, and, and the worst mistake we can make is not to be patient, not to, not to uh, lose to, to lose faith in what he promised, because he promised it, and it will happen. Absolutely. And you know, time goes by, and we say, "Well, it's not going to happen." Wrong. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Okay. Yeah. You don't know how long it'll take, but no. what you do know is that it will. Happen. It will happen. That's it right. will happen. Yeah. Absolutely. In Mark chapter 11, you know, uh, Jesus said, and when you pray, believe, trust, be confident that it is granted to you mm -hmm. and you will get it. And you Mark, will. Mark 11, 24. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the, that was the amplified translation of that. Yeah. you will get it mm. uh, and it's it's a bit like a seed when you know you, you plant a seed i mean if if i took some some grass seed in my hand and i went outside and i put it in the ground and then i put some water on it and then i just stood there going come on come <laughs> <Yeah>. on <laughs> yeah, th as you say treflin there's a period of time when yeah. when it's going to grow and yeah. but that day's coming That's and uh, it's, it's so exciting to know that he's on the case and working behind the scenes for you. The moment you've prayed, it's happened in the amen. spiritual. Yes. Yeah. yes. The moment you say amen, it has taken mm, place right. in the spirit. Yeah. And it's just a matter of time now. And you just got to every day be going, thank you, Lord. I'm amen. excited. Thank you for that healing or whatever it might be. Yeah. Like. yeah. And I, I was, I was sharing, um, I was preaching in the church one day and I said to somebody, I said, you know, when you pray for something, do you ever pray again and again and again? And they said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, if you wanted to catch a bus, where would you go? And they said, to a bus stop. I said, all right. And when you get to the bus stop, I said, what do you see? What do you mean? I said, is the bus there? It, well, it might not be. I said, so if the bus isn't there and you're still at the bus stop, what are you going to do? Well, I'll wait. Why, why would you wait? Because the bus is going to come. Oh, you wouldn't walk away and go to another bus stop. No, I'd wait. <laughs> so, so I said, why'd you wait, though? Because I know the bus is coming. All right. I said, that's fine. I said, if you if you got there and the bus was there, I said, you'd consider that a miracle because you get it straight away. I said, but if you go to the bus stop and you wait because you trust. I said, but I said, we as Christians, you know, you come and ask me to pray, and I'll pray. Then it's saying, well, he's not much good. I'll go and ask Bernard. Bernard will pray. Oh, that didn't work. I'll go and ask Billy. I say, why do you do that? Because it's like going to that seed and taking it out. And I also tell the story that I, and this is obviously not true. I said, but my wife, Anne, she went online one day, and, and she'd ordered a vacuum cleaner. And I said, um, have you got it yet? And she said, no. I says, well, you better order it again. And she says, but <laughs> I says, because you haven't got it. She says, but it's coming. I said, but it's not here. So you'd have to cancel that order and order another one. And then because it's not arrived, and you could end up with five vacuum cleaners. But, you know, people, we, we do that. We run around like headless chickens because prayer hasn't been answered. Um, I'm, I'm going to put, send this begging letter. I'm going to put it in this post box. Oh, nobody sent me any money. Well, don't use that post box. That one doesn't work. Try that one over there. You know, but we yeah. lose faith because we don't trust that. Once we've prayed yeah. for something, believe that you've received it. Exactly. And that's Jesus. You know, 
<laughs> and that's why, and that's why intimacy with Jesus, getting to know him, making, you know, seeking him with all of our yes, hearts yes. and being in this precious word. You know what happens? You get to a place, if you really do that, you get to a place where you don't doubt. You mm -hmm. literally get to the place that Abraham got to in Romans chapter four, when it says, no distrust made him waver or doubtingly question the promises mm -hmm. of God. He got, now he wasn't like that at the beginning, but he got there eventually. He got to a place where he believed he was going to have a son, even though he was, you know, a hundred years old and his wife was in her nineties, but he got to that place where he believed that because God had said it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's because he had that intimacy with the Lord. And that's really one of the things that, that is, is needed very much in, in the body of Christ is that no, the understanding of meditating in God's word. Yes. It might just be one scripture that you meditate on and med and then, what happens is it becomes revelation. Amen. And when you get revelation, then you're going to see manifestation come. Amen. But if there's no real med meditation in God's word, that revelation isn't there. And so that's something that we can all do more of, really. Absolutely. The, 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 you know, it says, obviously, that the word of God is, is double-edged. It's like a double-edged sword. Um, but having that word, it works in our lives and it gives us, you know, we, we want confidence. You know, when you're playing Paul and, and you take a harmonica, you make sure you, you know it's going to work. You know, you trust it. You haven't got 15 in the key of A. Well, it might have, but <laughs> I would imagine that the one you've got is the one that you know is going to work and you trust it. You know, you trust it. And sometimes I think it's it's because we, we're impatient we're impatient, and I've just learned patience. My uh, my wife Anne turned around to me two years ago when COVID, during COVID, she said, I think I want to play bass guitar. I said, are you serious? She said, yeah. I said, okay, let's go and buy a guitar. So I went down, we bought a, um, a Squire um, jazz, you know, short, short neck jazz, like a junior, junior bass guitar. And she said, show me what to do. Well, I, I play guitar, but I'm not, I've never played bass guitar. I thought, here we go. So I had to re rethink in terms of working the, the last four strings. And um, I taught her to play. And now she plays. And I said, you know, God didn't want you to play bass guitar just to give you something to do. He, he wanted you to do that for a reason. And now we go out and we play and we, we play worship in, in different places in the, in the prison and in different churches. And we call ourselves just the two of us because people say, how many of you are there? I say, oh, just the two of us. And it's, <laughs> that's God, lovely. God had a plan for us to do that. He had a plan for us, and and, and she's just taken to it. And I, and that's nothing to do with me. You know, it's nothing to do with me. God gave me the ability to be able to to, to show her what to do. But it's all God inspired. And I said, you know, with this, we're doing this for a reason. And music, to me, is the most, most, most important thing. In, in the ministry of, of, of Christ, because you can you can thank God through music, you can share the gospel through music, you can expound on the word of God through music, we can be emotional through music, you know, we can be happy, we can be off the clock through singing worship music, but we can also be very, very serious as well. And music is so important. And, and when John um, went... In, was was taken to heaven and saw um, in, in Revelation, as it explains, uh, the first place he went to was the throne room. I think that's Revelation 4. And they were all singing praises. So music is so, so important, you know, and I think you've got the gift, yeah. uh, a beautiful voice and the ability to play the harmonica. Wow, it blows me away. I, and by the way, I, I can't trust an A harmonica as much as I can trust Jesus because <laughs> sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes that A harmonica, the four hole draw will drop slightly in pitch and I'll either have to, uh, I, I might have to sort of take out the uh, kit and just mend it a bit. Or if it's dropped more than a quarter of a tone, uh, it's gone. Yeah, that one's finished. <laughs> so so um, 
yeah, I'd take out another one and trust it. But uh, but but you can't trust a musical instrument like you can trust Jesus. No, no way. I, I I know I know. But what I'm saying is we we we, we trust we trust the physical. If I put coffee in that cup, which I need sometimes, um, I'm I'm not in fear of it leaking out the bottom because I trust it. Yes. You know? Um, I trust it. and But the one thing is that people, because God doesn't respond straight away, they think, oh, it's not going to happen. But we have to believe in that. We we are responsible for mm. our own situation. We're part of, of, of the manifestation of mm. the healing that, that we've asked for. You mm. know, and, yeah. and d- having doubt is, is not a good place to be, you know. Yeah. You've got to doubt the doubts. You've got to <laughs> doubt the evil and absolutely believe the one who yeah, loves you yeah. and made you and died for you. That's the one we've got to believe because he will never, he's an unfailing God, Amen. unfailing God. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. Once we make that commitment to him, we're his and he's not going to let us down. He's going to look after us. Just very briefly, God gave me a little illustration once about trust. And um, and I was at an airport in this little picture. It was like a little picture that I saw. And I was in an airport and I went through, you know, when you go through and you put your stuff through the sort of um, well, the security. security yeah, yes, check what you've got. that's right. Yeah. And I'd just gone through in this little dream that I had. And then I suddenly realized I hadn't posted a little parcel that I had. And it was like urgent that I post it that day. And there's no post boxes when you go through that part of the airport. And I thought, what am I going to do? I didn't know the security men. I couldn't say, can you post this for me? It's urgent. I've got to, you know. But I looked back in my dream. And on the other side, I could see a dear friend that I knew walking past. And I screamed out, hello, and I called this person's name. And they looked at me, and they went, hello, where are you going? And I called back. And then I lifted up this parcel, and I said, can you post this for me? And they said, yes, yes. So I gave it to one of the security people to give it to this person. The person grabbed hold of the parcel, waved back at me, and said, don't worry, I've got it. I'll post it for you. Have a lovely trip. And I went, in my dream, I went, phew, it's going to be posted. And I got on the plane, peaceful. And the Lord, this was in my dream, but the Lord spoke to me and he said, that's how I want you to feel when you say amen when you pray. I've got it now. I'll take care of it now. Mm. And, and, And trust me. And and I trusted that person in the dream because this was a dear person I knew. And and so, but God is even greater than a dear person that we might know. Yes, uh, that's, that's a really good little story. And now I was thinking about, you know, what you said about trusting a musical instrument. If you've got, if you've uh, looked after it and cared for it, and you know that every note is perfectly in tune, you would be confident then in worshiping God with it. And, and, and you would say, ah, oh, this, right, Jesus, I love you. And this is what I'm, and I'm playing this for you. Amen. And, and you, you know, you've looked after it. And so then you know it's going to work. And that's the whole point of worship is to make sure that you have that connection to Jesus. Yeah. Is is are you in his presence? Amen. Are you in a good relationship with him? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And in his presence we know we have fullness of joy. Yes. Fullness of joy, it's, absolutely. It's such a beautiful place to be, isn't it, Treflin? Yeah. In, yeah. in his presence. Yeah. I don't want to be anywhere else. No. And you could be washing up. You can be driving your car. You can be digging the garden. You can be going into the office. You can be going to the loo. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, he's with you. And you can just keep talking to him. Just those yeah. little moments all the time, just staying in that place. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's I you know it's for, for for people who say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Um, I depending upon their attitude, I'll say, well, I'm I'm not bothered whether you do or whether you don't. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with you. But what what's the date today? And I'll give you the date and say, well, what does it mean, 2023? Oh, I don't know. Then I'd remind them that that's how many years since Jesus was born. And the truth is the truth. And you can't escape from the truth. And and I say, well, if you don't believe, you know, in God, if you don't believe in Jesus, just ask God. And don't, you know, if you've got any questions, just ask God. He will answer them for you. He will answer them for you. I, I don't have all the answers. All I can say is I can tell you what Jesus has done in my life mm. and what he can do for me, he can do for you and probably do things for you that I don't need in my life and and and, and vice versa. But it's, it's the one person that we can put our trust in. We have to put our trust in Jesus because yes. without Jesus, there wouldn't be anything. There wouldn't be anything at all, you know. And our, our life here on earth now is just the beginning. I feel as if I've been given a second lease of life, having lost nine stone in 12 months. But I did ask God. I did pray to the Lord and said, I need to lose weight. Um, I need your help. Now, if the Lord had said, OK, just go to bed and I've woken up the next morning nine stone lighter, would I have changed my ways? Would I have changed my eating habits? Would I have changed my lifestyle? No. I'd have carried on doing all the stuff I was doing before and put the weight back on. But now I'm five years later and I'm I'm, I'm, on, I'm eating one meal a day and I run an international support group for people um, who want to lose weight and reverse type 2 diabetes. And this wow. is all God-given. You know, and I understand now more about how the body works and some of the things that the Lord has done for us. Yeah. Um, and I know more, I've got experience that my doctor hasn't got. And, but you know, we can save lives in so many different ways because, you know, the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. And he will destroy the body of Christ. And um, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says that we shouldn't do anything that contaminates our body. But there are people who cripple with arthritis, they have cancer, you know, mobility issues. And it's all because we are self-harming. And the Lord taught and showed me that I was self-harming by the way that I was eating my food and the carb because I was piling my body with carbohydrates. And I always wanted to be slim like you, Paul. And now I am. I am. Yeah. <laughs> and you look great. You look great, okay. Jefflin. Honestly. What a difference. Well, it's, it's an amazing difference. Yeah, it's that and it's changed it's changed my thinking and it's changed my attitude. And um I just want this for everybody. Not, not, it's not, I'm not after fame and fortune. That's got, you know, I've had my little bit. I've had my, you know, um, fame. And, you know, I've met so many famous people. God's been so good to me. Um, when we were filming, we were filming in theatre. So we ended up filming the Encore Theatre Awards. I don't know if you know, do you know Johnny Mann at all? Um, the agent, he was Norman Wisdom's agent and he was Daniel mm -hmm. agent now. But we worked with these people when we were working as, as children's entertainers. And I got to interview and meet Bert Whedon and wonderful people like that and pray with him and, and, and uh, Fiona Castle. And, you know, it's all God inspired, all for a reason, all for a reason. Seriously, yes. man, I, you know, God's got a plan and a purpose for our lives. And we, we have to just submit to his grace. He spoke to me once and said, submit to my grace. And I thought, what does that mean? So I looked up the word submit. And That's I great. Meant, but I had to see it. And it said, relinquish control, give up. And grace, obviously, in merited favour. So I've got to let God do what he wants to do. I was making yes. it difficult for him, a bit like a child. You know, you're trying to put a jumper on the child. And the kid's going like that. You say, keep your hands still. <laughs> you know, let me, I'll do it. And the child's trying to do all that. And I was like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and you just reminded me that this morning I thanked the Lord, uh, as I sometimes do, but I thanked him particularly this, the, this morning because he's no respecter of persons. Amen. And, it's, and it, you know, and uh, we, we, you, you can be the shape that you want to be, uh, but you have to, you have to do it yourself. I, you have to do what's necessary yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
because as as you say, God isn't going. You aren't going to go to bed and wake up in the morning nine stone lighter. You there's a there's a, a responsibility on us. But what's wonderful is that God has no choose, no favorites, yeah. and we, we're all the same to him, mm. and that is so wonderful. It really is, and what's lovely to hear about your stories, it's so encouraging for all of us because we've all done things in the past that weren't the best for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, not meaning to, just just not really thinking, you know, that it would be a problem. But what's lovely is no matter how many times we may have done the wrong things, failed, God can turn it around. Look at your life now. That's, he's used that mistake that you were making and hurting your body now he's being glorified. People are being helped. So uh -huh. whoever is watching today, um, if they've done things or they think that they're failures, oh my, that God loves to take hold of people like all of us uh -huh. and turn um, our lives around and turn us into a direction that is so positive and fruitful and good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we literally go, Lord, how did you do this? Amen. Because I'm so I, I was I was so far away from this goodness, and now you you've literally poured so much goodness into my life. It's a bit like you know the lovely famous Psalm Psalm 23, that very last bit that says, "Surely only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever." And yeah. that's his heart and his passion for everybody, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, one, one of the songs that, that we sing is we sing The Lord's My Shepherd to the tune of The House of the Rising Sun. You know? And and, and if you sing the uh, the Lord's Prayer, um, our Father, I'm trying to think now, there is a house, a Father... Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, so <laughs> that's it, it, it. Wow, it's it's powerful, and it's you, you know we can say so much through music, and really, really, just just yeah. love the. Fact that, we, that, we sing. Uh, What is that? Green Hill. Oh yeah, there is a Green Hill far away, to the tune of of that that's House of the Rising Sun. Yeah. There is a Green Hill far away, outside of City Wall. Yeah. And uh, yeah. uh, but uh, I have heard the bl the Blind Boys uh, sing. What was it? Oh yeah. They sing Amazing Grace to that tune. <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so who, uh, whoever actually wrote that, that it song. Was Hud Hud I, Hud it, was it was Huddy Ledbetter. No. Huddy Ledbetter yeah, wrote sorry. House of the Rising Sun. No, he may have recorded it, but he certainly didn't write it. I it's a must Oh, I don't think he, he gets credit for writing all sorts of things. But happy um, birthday to you, wasn't it? And and and, and pick a bale of cotton. That's one of his, isn't it? Jump down, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. It may be one of his, or it may yeah. not. Nobody knows. But but. I'm just um, Googling there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, House of the Rising Sun, who made the original? Bob Dylan? No, he didn't. The Dallin Price, he did. When was the land of the, uh, not the Rising Sun? Who wrote the House of the Rising Sun? Um, no. It's not known. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, I, I always thought it was Huddy totally better. Oh, well, I know the animals recorded it, yeah. Oh, well, never mind. We're digressing. But when I, think Josh, I think Josh White recorded House of the Rising Sun probably at least as early as Lead Belly. But um, whether he claimed the authorship, I don't know. 
uh, honestly, it, it, it's a much older song than either of those people, any of those people. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. It's a fabulous piece of music, as you said, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fabulous piece of music, yeah. And there's so many beautiful worship songs now. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. you know, I mean, just gorgeous worship songs. And that's another way to stay in that place of intimacy is to just, you know, you're going around your day doing what you're doing. And you may be doing some very unimportant things. You might be getting dressed or whatever. But you can be singing a worship song. Mm. I mean, we just love the song that's been happening for a while now. Um, all my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you've been so, so good. And we just with every breath yes. that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah, it's we lovely. just love to sing that song, and I'll be making the breakfast and singing yeah. that song, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, cleaning my teeth and trying to sing that song. But the, <laughs> the point is, they're just so precious, aren't they? That, yeah. that the songs of worship to stay close to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, as you say, uh, because music is is part of church, but sometimes. You go to church and, and and the music's there and you think, oh, Lord, I just I just want to carry on. Let's just please carry on. But they have to yes. stop because they've got invited someone to speak or there's a message or there's something happening. Yes. I totally understand that. You know, could you just imagine, Paul, you've turned up in Denia and the worship is going on and they just carry on saying, I'm sorry, Paul, but so we didn't have enough time. Uh, could you come back next week? <laughs> Well, we wouldn't have minded, you know, we wouldn't have minded, Treflin, because we wow. were just in the most wonderful place with the Lord. It was glorious. It was. And they were singing in Spanish in the morning service. And we were singing in English. And then all of a sudden, in fact, during that song that I, we were just quoting. Yes. All of a sudden, they all went into English, the worship team. And then the tears f flowed even Oh, more, yeah. they? they'd already been flowing. Oh, they'd already been flowing. <laughs> yeah, then, it was. Oh, it was most glorious, joyful yeah. day. It was. It, really it was, was more a bit, it, evening and morning. Yeah. No, it's such a. So, 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 can, can I ask you a question? When can you remember when you you sort of came to the realization of the reality of the reality of Jesus? Really, you know, because I, I, um, we're familiar with the testimony, Paul. And I know that you, are, you had arguments with Cliff about him. You tried to belittle him <laughs> because you didn't want to, well, agree, you know. But when you say, you know, this Jesus is real, he's really real. It was a long, slow process, actually, for me. Um, but just to try and condense it a bit. I, I was 25 years an atheist from the age of 15 to the age of 40. And... Um, what really started the atheism crumbling in my life was the realization that I have something inside me which can recognize spirituality. And that came about because of my fondness for the paintings of a German artist called Caspar Friedrich, um, who uh, was himself a, a very, very born again convinced sincere christian but um it it happened that i i couldn't understand how it was that i could look at a landscape or a picture of a man looking out to the sea uh, and and know that i was looking at something spiritual and atheism crumbled to dust however i didn't you know jesus was not in my life yet uh, so I, I, although I wasn't an atheist, I, I didn't know what I was. And what happened, uh, uh, the, the various other sort of stages in the process happened. But the, the main thing really was Cliff Richard inviting us to go and hear Luis Palau, the late, as we now unfortunately say, Luis Palau, at uh, White City Stadium in West London. And he preached out of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter one, starting at verse 16, which is the one that says, uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. And, 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 you know, Christ was really uh, real to me that evening for the first time. 
And so that was 1984, and we'd never looked back. <laughs> so yeah, it was it, that 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 was definitely. In fact, it was really as we walked away from that evening, uh, walking away from that stadium with 16,000 other people or whatever it was in there. And that was the case for a whole six week period when Luis Palau was preaching in London. And um, we, we, it was when we were walking away from it and talking about the future of our lives together. But for me, that was when I really got it. And uh, of course, um, that was another tear flowing, joyous moment. Amen. So, and, um, sorry, please. No, I was just going to say that um, just in the moments before the prayer of salvation in that stadium in 1984, as we were sitting quite high up and Luis Palau was closing um, and he was saying, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Are you going to pretend you're not in? Mm. Or will you open your heart and, and let him come in and let him love you and let him forgive you? I I I just start, I just broke. I mean, I just had such a big lump in my throat. The presence of God was tangible. It was so thick in that place. There'd been beautiful worship, which we'd never experienced before in our lives before, because we were not Christians at all. Mm. And I it was just so strong. And I couldn't wait for him to pray the prayer. He said he was going to pray a prayer. And I had already, without even knowing I needed to do this, under my breath, with the tears dripping onto my lap, <laughs> I was going, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And in my heart, was what was going on was that I was saying sorry that I'd lived. I was, I was 25, just 25. And I was feeling so sorry that I'd lived up to 25 years of age without totally surrendering to him. And that's what I was saying sorry for over and over again. And then after that wonderful conversion, a little while later, Paul was doing a gig in, in Spain, um, in Barcelona. And, and you were on with the dire straits. And Paul was going off to do a rehearsal sound check. And I was back at the hotel and he was then going to come back. We were going to have a meal and then I was going to go to the, the gig. I was in this hotel room and Paul said, I'll be about an hour. I was on my own in this hotel room. And I thought, what am I going to do? And I hadn't brought a book to read. And here I am, a baby, baby Christian. And I thought, well, I'll turn the television on, but I don't know Spanish. So why am I turning the television on? But I did. I turned it on. And Treflin who was on the television was an English preacher. And he was coming to the end of his sermon about how much Jesus loves us. And the Lord knew that I would struggle with the fact that he loves us unconditionally because I'd had some things in my past. My father hadn't been there for me and it's a long story, but I won't go into it. But I, I was an insecure person at that time. And the Lord wanted to begin that healing and on this television program, I sat on the end of the bed and he was saying, he loves you. Start saying, Jesus loves me out loud. Say it out loud. Read his word and say out loud, Jesus loves you. And I thought, I can't say that. That's embarrassing. But I, he finished. He, and he, it was the end of the program. And I switched the television off. And I thought, well, there's no one here. So I whispered. Jesus, you love me. And I felt like a complete plonker saying that. <laughs> and then for some reason, I decided to just lie on the bed and I closed my eyes and I began to say, Jesus, you love me. You love me. And I got stronger and more confident. And I began to say, you love me unconditionally, don't you? You really love me. You died for me. You laid your life down for me. And the little that I knew, I began to say out of my mouth. Treflin, I don't know how long it was, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The presence of the Lord came in that room so strong. 
I was weeping with joy, weeping with joy. And even sort of a bubbling, sort of almost a joyful laughter was coming. And I didn't know anything about the manifestations of the love of Jesus, nothing. And it was so glorious. It was so, so, so glorious. And and I was there and I, I just carried on being in this place of worship and I was learning. I was meeting him so intimately. It was so wonderful. Then there was a knock on the door. And I thought it was Paul and I jumped up and I ran to the door and it wasn't. It was a like a hotel, uh, I don't housekeeping. know, housekeeping with, with some water. And I thanked the woman for the water and I closed the door and then I saw the clock and I realized Paul would be back any second. Went into the bathroom to sort of, you know, change and I was still talking to the Lord. I looked in the mirror. I had mascara right down my face <laughs> everywhere. Quickly splashed my face, put on something else and the door opened. Paul walked in through the door and this is what he said when he looked at me. He said, what have you been doing? I said, why? He said, you look amazing. And it was nothing to do. I hadn't done anything clever. Paul was seeing a change in me. He was seeing the glory of the Lord on me because of that wonderful time that I'd had with him, that encounter with Jesus. I, I, that's that's an, an absolutely wonderful, 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 encouraging story in there and I'm, I'm so glad that, that you've shared that and what's what's come out of that to me is that you don't have to wait for that bus to arrive you know you we can call Jesus anytime we don't need to make an appointment we don't need an app we don't need to fill in the form we don't need to get into a queue we don't need to ask permission we don't need to dress in a very specific or explicit way we don't need to be in a special place we don't need to have it to do it at a special time. You know, God's God is there for us. Jesus is there for us right now. If we have his ear or and his attention all of the time. And for anybody who's watching this, who hasn't um made the commitment, I'll use the word commitment, um, by I use it, you know, very cautiously, but for somebody who hasn't reached out. And I asked Jesus to to be part and be in their lives. You know, he, he's available right now. You know, you haven't got to wait until half past seven. You haven't got to wait until it's a rainy day. You haven't got to wait until it's miserable. You haven't got to wait until you're happy. You haven't got to wait until you're full up. You haven't got to wait until you're fed. You haven't got to wait until you go to church. You know, he's available right now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, and all you need to say, you don't have to say either this amazing prayer that's so kind of clever. You just say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. And if that's all you say, he'll accept that and you will become his child right there and then. And he will never leave you or forsake you from that time on. And he will begin to guide you and show you. People do say, don't they? Um, I can't actually make the commitment at the moment. I've got to get my life sort of tidied yeah, up a yeah. bit and then I can do it. Yeah. And the whole point is you won't tidy your life up until you do it. No. And then, wham, it'll just tidy itself. I'm, I'm not good enough. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good enough for God. Yeah, really. You know, um, yeah, there, there was there was a friend uh, of mine um you might, you might have uh, heard of him. His, his name is Stephen French. They wrote a book about him called The Devil. And um, he, he was uh, well known um, for um, robbing drug dealers in Liverpool. If you, and, uh, you know, he he actually became a Christian. And Charlie Hale, our, our mutual friend, uh, um, introduced yeah. me to, um, to Stephen. Anyway, one, I, I won't go into, long, long, into a long story, but one day Stephen said... The Holy Spirit is is doing amazing things in my life. Would you please pray that I'm worthy to receive them? Now, Stephen's um, about six foot twenty seven, and is <laughs> um, a martial arts fighter. And I I wrote back to Stephen. I sent him a text back. I said, Stephen, I said you will never ever be worthy enough to receive anything from God. I said He loves yeah, you, yeah. irrespective of whether you're worthy or not. 
And the Lord taught me something that day. You might have been to church and heard, I'm sure you've heard this said before, we're going from glory to glory. You've heard that, haven't you? Yeah. And I said, what a stupid thing to say. What does that mean? And the Lord showed, told me and, and, and explained to me that in this is a process of sanctification, it's been made fit for purpose. You know, yeah. I'm not good enough to go on stage and play with Paul Jones because I, I'm, I'm not fit for purpose. But somebody like Bryn Howarth, who is a wonderful guitarist, he's fit for purpose so he can go. But I'm still working my way there. Do you understand yeah. me? And so, so therefore, God is making us fit for purpose. It, the sanctification, you know, um, and it's like Anne learned to play space guitar. She's now fit for purpose to play for, to play with me. And but God says, you know, I'll accept you as you are. You haven't got to be that all-encompassing thing. I'll do that for you. You do the possible, and God will do the impossible. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, yes. amen to that. It's brilliant. Well, we, the, Traveling, yeah. yeah, the great thing is that we can say because we're new creatures that we have the righteousness yeah. of God. That Jesus gave us His righteousness, yes. and, mm -hmm. and and it's hard to explain sometimes to people that you cannot be righteous enough yourself mm -hmm. to to get anywhere with God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because Jesus did what He did that we have his righteousness mm. just laid on us yeah. because we've, all we've done to, to do that is to say, yes, thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I just, I've just got my Bible out, basic instructions before leaving earth, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a child's coloring book, as you can say there, you know. <laughs> all and, right, um, yeah. But I, I love Romans 5, and it talks about here, um, Romans 5, 17, uh, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness? It's a gift. Yes. You don't have it's to earn gift. it. You get it. Free. Yes. No strings yes. attached. It's yours no strings. right now. And if you want yes. it, just ask the Lord for it. It's his to give and it's yours to receive. Wow, this is powerful stuff here, Paul and Fiona. We, I think we're going to get through to some people here today, but it's not by what we do, it's by what who God will send the right people to watch and listen Thank to you. this. Because, you know, we can do it without us, really, can't we? Completely, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Wow. And, and, and Romans 5, I, I love Romans 5, I love it all, but Romans 5 is amazing. Romans 5, 18, consequently... Just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, and for those of you out there who might not understand that fully, Adam and Eve, and Eve obviously ate the fruit from the tree of, the, of um, the knowledge of good and evil, and sin entered the world, and that was the fall of man. So, so that was the result of the one trespass, condemnation for all men, so we all became sinners. So also the result of one act of righteousness was the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, was justification that brings life for all men. And you can have Amen. that life, that everlasting life. Hallelujah. You know, it's been done. The price has been paid. You don't have to go out there. You don't have to lay yourself on the ground and whip yourself or even get your neighbor to nail you to a cross. Don't, don't go there. Don't try and do anything silly like that. Just say, Jesus, please help me. I need your help. And there's nothing wrong in asking for help from Jesus because... He wants he wants to help. Yes. He right. does. Yeah. He That's does. Right. He does. And his love, oh boy. Oh, taste and see that the Lord oh, is good. good. Just is. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, Paul, Fiona, it's an absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I think we've already done this, but I think we should do it again. Would you, for, for anybody out there who wants to go through the opportunity and have the opportunity once more with us here to ask Jesus to become Lord of the life. And Romans 10, 9, 10, which is my good friend, Sean Very, um, a thorn cross HMPYOI says, Romans 10, 9, 10, TNT is the dynamite verse. For if you, <laughs> if you, I love that. <laughs> for if you um, believe in your heart, Yes. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And it says in Romans 5, 
I think it's Romans 5, 7. I'm, I'm not going to look right now. That we are saved from the wrath of God. And that's what we all want. We just want to be reunited with the Lord, as it says in Revelation 21. For the dwelling place of, of, of men is now with God. There will be no more tears, no more weeping. For the old is gone and the new has come. And we've all got that to look forward to. So if you want to be part and parcel of that, and please, I, I pray that you do, I'm going to invite Fiona or Paul just to lead us through what is known as the sinner's prayer. These are not magical words, but they're just a guideline on, on what you might say. And obviously, if you can, say it with us, say it with Paul or with Fiona. And you can watch this as many times as you want and keep saying it because Jesus only needs to hear it once. Amen. Amen. It's, it's your... Okay. Father in heaven, I come to you now and I ask you, please, to take care of me. I believe in your son. I believe what I've heard today, that Jesus, you died on a cross for me. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for taking my sin and shame. I turn to you fully now. Jesus, come into my heart. Fill me with your very presence. Forgive my past. I turn to you fully and make you the Lord of my life. I receive everlasting life now. And I ask you to bless me and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, it's been wonderful spending the afternoon. I like it as an hour, so I've, I've sang with Paul Jones. Ha <laughs> <laughs> hey, ha! Oh, thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you so much, Paul. And thank you for everybody who's watched this. And please share it with your friends and your relatives. And just keep telling people that Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos.